Hello. <laughs> Look. Mommy gonna eat popcorn and teach you some vocabulary words based on my understanding of the document that has defined and governed your life. First, <laughs> we're gonna start with this document here. This is a document of matrimony. This document is backed by this. It doesn't have any teeth. The law doesn't do anything with this document except allow you to change your name to the name of the male on the document. That's what that does. But if all you want is a name change, or you can go down to court, pay $300, and get yourself a name change. You don't need this. But, you know, this is what backs this. This is a vow of holy matrimony. Okay? That's what I, that's what I understand. Now, I could be wrong. That's why I'm going to open up my head, my brain to you, and let you know how I'm thinking. What What's going on inside my head. Because I've been defined by, to you for years now, based on other people's understanding of me. So I'm going to do my best I can succinctly in these little videos and kind of open up some 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 insight into how I've been thinking about these things now here we go let's go about let's go with this document here now this is <laughs> this is the, a divorce decree and it is divorce papers look up the word decree and look up the word paper. When we were growing up, my dad used to send us to the dictionary and to the encyclopedia to to define words and look up stuff that was going on, you know, in school with the crazy kids calling people names and all kinds of stuff that, you know, he wanted us to, you know, look up just to be knowledgeable. Don't just take things at face value. Know what's really going on. If somebody call you a B-I-T-C-H, don't get mad. What you get mad for? Look up the look up the word. Now, after you know the definition of the word, are you that? No. So then why be <laughs> bothered by it? Okay. So go to the dictionary. Look up the word papers and look up the word decree. This is divorce papers. This is a divorce decree. On the same line, look up the word agreement, look up the word settlement. Look up the word agreement, look up the word settlement. This is not, N-O-T, not a divorce agreement, nor is it a, a divorce settlement. Okay? Get that? Look it up. Go get there. The words up. Because this is important to me. I, like I said, since I was young, gone to the dictionary and to the encyclopedia to learn the meaning of words. You don't just say stuff because everybody else is saying it or because it sounds good at the end of a sentence. Like, I promise. You don't just say I promise. But I promise means something. If you just say something, look up the word say. Look up the word promise. Is there a difference between the two? If you just say something, if you say, I'm going to the movies, that's one way of saying, put, putting a statement. Another way of putting the statement is, I promise I'm going to the movies. Do they mean the same thing? Look it up. Look up the word say, look up the word promise. Now what if you say, I vow, <laughs> I vow before God and country, the Lord, family, friends, and everything I know, I vow that I'm going to the movies. Okay, which one of those had the strongest statement? The one that I say I'm going to the movies, I promise that I'm going to the movies, or I vow that I'm going to the movies? <laughs> you figure this out. Use your brains. Use your critical thinking skills and try and figure this out. Because this is important. Because that's, that's how we end up. That's why we are where we are now. Because I didn't just go into a situation based on somebody saying, I say that. I'm going to make a family with you and create a life with you and learn and live and love by the 
glory of the Lord. I'm just saying that because I I, I, I re really believe that that's what I want to do. That's not what happened. Look, where where that baby? At? This is more than just our wait. This is more than just our say. Okay. So you go to the dictionary. You look those words up and just see how I feel while my hair was on fire in 2004. Now these people, you would probably looked at my life and from 2004, read all the stuff that they had to say about me, defining me based on what happened in 2004. I was born in 1964. So I had 40 years of history behind me before they come up with what happened in 2004. 2004 didn't have to happen, but it did. All this mess started in 2001. So that's a long time if you ask me. You had 2001, 2002, <laughs> 2003, <laughs> 2004. Do you know what all happened in 2001, 2, 3? Before we got to 2004, now they're going to find me to you by what happened in 2004. Now it is up to you as men. Now see, all this is coming out because y'all grown. In 2017, you be grown men. Is it all this stuff you can deal with as men? Because words matter. You just can't keep just come up with stuff. And so, don't be just looking at my life in 2004 and decide that I'm a derelict. Somebody that you can just, oh, you know, just <laughs> give the hand to. <laughs> because I made too many sacrifices for you to think that I'm just going to fade quietly into the background, cry my ice cream, <laughs> eat, eat, eat shit and die, like they say. That's not going to happen. Y'all got to figure this out. Because, Mommy, I'm done. <laughs> I had enough of this stuff. It done went on long enough. Because look what done happened is where, where these documents at? They tried to <laughs> they tried to shove this document up my rear end, shove it down my throat. That that, that like I say, divorce papers, divorce decree. It is not an agreement, nor is it a settlement. So then what happened? This document was created. Let me see. It, uh, 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 that document kicked in. Then they want to look at me sideways. <laughs> look at me sideways and you know, wonder what the heck is wrong with me because this document came into play. Well, then when that document came into play, this one came into play. Elizabeth went to court and got this one. Then another document. Decree of termination. That means they terminated my parental rights. This document, this document, this document didn't, this, this document was important too. And this document was important. These documents are the documents that was very important in your lives. This document was created, but it didn't really play a part in your life to a large degree. You can look through, you should get your eyes on these documents, sort through them, and see what they all, what they say inside of them. Because you're grown now. You know what was said in these documents. Why would anybody give somebody a termination of parental right? What, 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 what needs to happen in, in order for that to happen? You need to figure it all out. Don't just go with the flow. Don't just be ignorant of the situation. Get it in your head as to what documents were your advantages and what documents were your disadvantages. Who put which documents in place? Because I know I wasn't absent in my life. I was present the whole time. Present and accounted for and in my right mind. <laughs> Elizabeth will tell you that I was on drugs, <laughs> that I was homeless, <laughs> that I was not bonded to my kids, that I was all she'll get, oh you have to say all that kind of stuff in order to get this decree of termination. She was a social worker. She knew what to say. So you come up with all this stuff. I didn't even recognize my own life by the time she got finished. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> when this document came into play, degree of termination, you know what happened? I got this document into play. Look, attempted kidnapping. 
No, if I wasn't bonded to my kids, and if I didn't care, I wouldn't even attempt to kidnap you. Really, I didn't attempt to kidnap you. Really, they should have something that says plan kidnapping. Because I really didn't attempt. I just made a plan, and I had a good plan, too. So God is with me. He took care of fools and babies, and I'm not a baby, so I definitely was a fool. But I really had a plan. I went out, got, <laughs> I wrote a letter of asylum. I got a boating license. I purchased a boat. I got all the safety equipment that we needed to take that trip. We were going to Cuba. I was going to seek asylum in Cuba. I was going to, um, what they call that? I was going to, my, my citizenship, I was going to, uh, there was a term I can't even remember what that term was anymore. I was going, but it was like get rid of your citizenship. I was going to turn in my citizenship. Like I don't be an American citizen anymore. I won't go Cuba. <laughs> be a Cuban citizen. But anyway, that's where I was going with that. But we wouldn't have made it. But I at the time I didn't know it. <laughs> I had a good plan. I was going. I was going to skirt the intercoastal highways, and then after we got to the intercoastal highway, we we're going to shoot the asthma straight to Cuba with my my, my compass and everything. God looks out for fools and babies. So I didn't get that far. I got arrested and I got, I'm a convicted felon now, man. Mommy is a convicted felon. I got a attempted kidnapping times two. So I got, uh, I was put on a million dollar bond. So if you wonder why I have it from 2005 to 2007, I was incarcerated in a Charleston County detention center. Now Elizabeth knew I was there. And you all were in that area. If she wanted to, she could have brought you to see your mom. But you know, you all ought to get your facts and understand what was going on. <laughs> and you know what I remember is I remember when we were in in the in the uh in the court <laughs> and uh they started talking about my kidnapping charges and stuff. And I don't remember how it came up, <laughs> but it was a percent. And that was for me <laughs> when they started discussing when they started talking about the duct tape and the uh the the the. the the uh taser gun and the uh tie what they call them things them tie whatever uh, plastic tie things <laughs> and that was <laughs> twist ties is what they call them and that was for me <laughs> I said to myself you dang all right that was for you everything that was security related like the the safety vest and all of the seat, the car seats. <laughs> yeah, I got her arrest record and all the things that was on my person at the time. And all the safety things, the tethers that would have tethered you to me. And all your little waterproof books and everything that you could read along the way. I mean, we was going on a trip, man. <laughs> but Elizabeth said, <laughs> and that was for me. <laughs> The twist ties, the, the the stun gun, and the duct tape. <laughs> but you know, God, God intervened. He said, no, my child, I'm not going to let you go down that route. So really, I never did an attempt at kidnapping. I did a planning of a kidnapping. So, And, and that could be verified because I had a job in Columbia, Palmetto Medical Center. I already had a job lined up. I was with a traveling nurse agency. They had me set up in an apartment and everything. I was ready to go to work. I was work on a, I was gonna work on a um, chemotherapy unit. But that never happened. They fought they saw me coming out of the gym one day. They arrested me for attempted kidnapping and that's all she wrote. <clears throat> Anyway, you should get these facts, man. Mommy, <laughs> mommy has been through the mill regarding these circumstances. You know, God tells us, He say, you know, you know, if <laughs> you never know what you're gonna face when you go through life, but you know, He plan, you know, but He prepares you for it all. So I don't know. I don't care what they call me on this side of the dirt. I just care what they say in the end. You ran a good race, and you fought a good fight. <laughs> But you know, Elizabeth came into my life on my signature. So she gets she she doesn't get as much latitude as your father got for screwing our family over. You don't get that much latitude. But she gets some latitude. Because like I say, she came in on my signature. When I married her son, I also accepted her and all their relatives into my family. I knew the lady <laughs> was certifiable <laughs> when I met her. I knew she was certifiable, but <laughs> I thought I read you with managers, mom. You know how they say with assumption, A-S-U-A-S-S-U-M-E. You make an ass out of you and you make an ass out of me. 
<laughs> so I did. I made that assumption. I thought that Reggie would manage his mom, <laughs> but clearly he didn't manage his mom. So it made an ass out of him and it made an ass out of me. Because she was certifiable when I met her, and clearly when Reggie decided that he was done with his family, he wanted to start over. <laughs> he released, he, he put his, he sick his mama on us. <laughs> Wait, let me stop laughing. But like I said, I knew she was certifiable. So all we can do <laughs> is deal with this situation as best we can. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know what else I was getting ready to say. I'm getting ready to eat me some popcorn. Because what I'm going to say is, oh, that's what I was saying. I was saying I tolerate her in my lane. Imagine if this was the booty call out here trying to come up to me toe-to-toe -to -toe and interfere in my family to the point that she got she got to be standing with Reggie with court documents. <laughs> That wouldn't have happened. She didn't come into my lane on my signature. So I don't even need to say what that would be all about. But that wasn't <laughs> in a million years. So that's why, you know, that's why I would never be in anybody's second wives club. Because, you know, them them second wives coming in and want to come up against the first the first wife with issues and then getting in the, <laughs> in the middle of the situation, they don't know nothing about it. <laughs> But anyway, so that's why I ain't even no second wives club back in those days. Now going forward, fifty plus I am. If I'm if I ever get married again, I could be a second, third, fifth, twentieth wife. I wouldn't care. <laughs> My children are already grown, so it don't matter. But anyway. What I was saying, cause the woman came into my life on my signature, I tolerate her there. And she got um uh, she got characteristics that I don't have. Let's say, for instance, if you all decided that you wanted to get into the drug world because you're all woe is me and, <laughs> and all distraught over your circumstances and you decide you want to try drugs, I ain't going to be at home crying in my ice cream. I'm going to be in that drug house right where you at. I'm going to have on my gas mask so I don't get passive ex exposure to drugs. I'm going to have on my night vision goggles so I can see what's going on <laughs> in the dark. <clears throat> and a big rat running around. I better see them too. Use them for target practice. I have my throwing knives and my ninja stars. <coughs> <coughs> and we just use them for target practice. And guess what? When the drug dealers come to try and sell you something, I say, oh no. These two are off limits. That's one time. Second time he comes. I said, oh no, these two are off limits. <laughs> and then what happened? I'll, I'll give their name, rank, social, and identifying markers to Elizabeth, and what'll happen? She'll take them to court. <laughs> I said, Elizabeth, look, these are the ones trying to sell a drug to Q and Terrence. <clears throat> she'll get out the jacuzzi, she'll put dry off, put on her clothes, and she'll go to court. And she'll get a restraining order. <laughs> and, get some. and that's the way it should happen. And so then if they try and sell you drugs a third time, they get arrested. They get locked up. Okay, and then here comes the new drug dealer. You know, just like when you lock one up, here come another one. So then here he come trying to sell you drugs. So, oh no, these two are off limits. Once. Then here and then here he come again. Oh no, these two are off limits. <laughs> that's number two. Got a little bit. Here you go. Name, rank, social. Here's the identifier markers. What she do? She go to court again. <laughs> Get a restraining order on them. <laughs> she get a restraining order on them. <laughs> and so, if they try and get you down drunk to you a third time, they get arrested. And you see, that's how you do that. <laughs> and before you know it, the word on the street will be, don't, don't approach our Q and Terrence and try and sell them drugs. Then grandma going to take you to court and get a restraining order. And get a restraining order. And so you see, we can work together. That's the way you do things as a family. You put things that you're comfortable with in play, your skill set. I put what I'm comfortable with, my skill set in play. And before you know it, we're all on the same team 
focus in on that, got the same objective in mind, and that's to keep the drug dealers away from our boys. But here we go. On opposite sides, got muskets pointed at each other instead of working together because when I, when you all were babies, when you were two and four and all this mess first started, Elizabeth and I should have been on the same team. The objective would have been to protect the children from whatever was going on but with Reggie and David. I don't know what was going on with Reggie and David. I don't understand that. But God didn't say go forth my child, go to the earth and understand everything about those degree singleton people. He didn't say that. He said run a good race and fight a good fight. And so all I can do is run a good race and fight a good fight. But I'm telling you, Reggie and David got my kids out here dating. <laughs> Going out here on dates with them. And my hair is on fire. I'm upside down on my head spinning. Then this, thing, this can't happen. This is not okay. Somebody step in and change this. Now they should have been with me instead of against me. But instead, they were against me. They put their heads in the sand. See no evil. Hear no evil. Speak no evil. They didn't know what to do. Well, I didn't know what to do either. I was going through this for the first time, so I was doing the best I can. But to do nothing is not an answer. But I'm going to cut this off because I don't want it to be too long. Like I said, I'm just trying to make some little short videos and try and get you inside my head to let you know. Because the, my main objective was to give you a family that you can emulate. A mom, a dad, and a kid. So that one day when you grow up and become parents, you can you can appreciate a, a nuclear home. Mom, dad, and the kid. I want you to have your same sex parent in your life that can show you how to behave like men. To be charismatic, to be the alpha male, to know how to treat women, to learn how to love and love the love and glorify the Lord. All that. That is something you cannot buy. That is something you cannot put a price tag on. That is what I wanted for you, and that's what I was seeking. And I didn't have any help with that. And so then when when when, <laughs> when things deteriorate, they want to look at me and say, what's wrong with me? <laughs> what's wrong with Deirdre? <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with me? <laughs> what's wrong with y'all? <laughs> Anyway, this is a crazy situation, and history is about to repeat itself because y'all are acting like crickets. <laughs> You're acting like you don't understand the gravitas of this situation. You should get your eyeballs on some of these documents and see what was really going on. I know a little bit ain't going to open her mouth and tell you what was going on. In fact, I don't even think she understands. She's a narcissist. She don't get none of this. This is over her head. But I'll appeal to those like you know, those collateral again, like your aunt, your 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 elders, the aunts, and the adult cousins. They gotta understand. This is not a joke. We don't. We do not want history to repeat itself. But it will, because this is non-negotiable. Elizabeth will not be the sounding board for my young. Look at her history. Born in 1946. She has negatively impacted three generations of singleton men. My children's surname is Singleton. She did a good job raising them through their childhood. She did a good job raising Reggie through his childhood. But when he became a man and needed wise counsel, he got folly. And I don't expect any different if my children went to her for wise counsel. They gonna get folly. And I ain't gonna sit by and let that happen. Not only that, my children have a higher calling than to be 
her crutch in her golden years. And I have a right to have a say. And 